Hi, and welcome to episode three of our series on color grading where we'll actually learn how to grade. I have my project already imported from Premiere and we're ready to give it some color. Let's start at the bottom with the workspace tabs. Because we brought our project in via XML, we're in the edit tab, but if you wanted to add footage, create timelines, and edit the footage together the way you would in Premiere, you'd start here in the media tab to do that. Fusion we'll ignore since it deals more with titles and graphics, and we'll go straight to color. In the middle is your timeline, with each clip as a thumbnail. I want to grade this clip first. On the right are our nodes. You can add as many as you want and make different adjustments to each one. You can either right click, add node, add serial node, or you can just hit Alt S on a PC or Option S on a Mac. I'll rename my first one primary grade, and then this one's going to be our LUT. For more on LUTs, make sure to watch our episode on those. I'll right click here and choose one. And basically what LUTs do is they convert flat log footage like we have here into a color space for output. Always add the LUT at the end of your grade, because they're destructive, meaning if your LUT creates blown out highlights, you can't get them back with any changes you make after the LUT is applied. Now I'll add more node adjustments. One to change the skin tone separately from the rest of the image. I'll want to brighten the eyes, so I'll add one for that. She has a couple of small blemishes, so I'll show you how you can handle those. I'll add a vignette, then a secondary grade, and I'm going to also add a creative grade. And there we go. Next, turn on your video scopes by going to Workspace, Video Scopes. Now we can see what we're doing as we make our adjustments. Down here is really the bread and butter of your grading tools. And here, our color wheels are really what we want to use. DaVinci gives us lots of choices for color wheels. Each wheel has two elements, the wheel for adjusting color, and this one for changing the luminance. Here we have our lift, gamma, gain, and offset. These basically correspond to shadows, midtones, highlights. And offset changes the entire image. Now each wheel affects its allotted area of the image, but it also affects everything else. Notice the waveform monitors when I slide these. A lot of the image is affected. Now at the top, we can click on these to bring up a separate set of color wheels. And here are our true shadow, midtone, and highlight controls. Notice how when I make adjustments to these, it only affects each wheel's area of the image. This one only brings up and down the shadows. This one only really affects the midtones. And this one really only deals with the highlights. There's a right time for each set of these wheels. And as you get familiar with how they work, you'll be really glad you have them both. Now let's head over to the middle of the workspace. You have curves. You have a qualifier to mask certain areas of the image. You can draw shape windows to create masks. You can track those shapes across movement. You can add blur. And here in key, you can change your input and output. This decides how much of each node's corrections are going to be visible in the image. Here's your sizing control for each clip, and 3D we won't worry about. OK, enough tour. Let's grade the clip. I'll start with my primary grade. This is where you find your color temperature and general tones. If your image is too warm or too cool, this is where you fix it. And notice how my red, green, and blue waveforms move as I change the color. These high peaks are the white background, and when they're all level, you found a good white. OK, that looks pretty good. I want to keep this kind of blue, and as I turn this on and off, you'll notice we lost a little bit of blue in her eyes. Also, in terms of highlights, you don't want to go much above 896. That's kind of your safety zone. If you bump your image up too much, you're going to get into where it's really blown out. Next is skin tones. I want to select just her skin, so I'll go to the qualifier and eyedropper. If you click here, you'll see what you've masked. I always take the blur radius up to about 35 to get rid of any hard edges in my mask. And then you can manually change these settings. Her eyes are pretty well masked out, and her face is masked pretty well too. Now any changes I make in this node will only be applied to the area of our mask. But I won't do much, I just want to give her a little bit more magenta, just a little bit more life. Now for her eyes. I'll go back in the qualifier, and I'll just select the blues of her eyes. Notice here we have a lot of slight blue I can't get out of our mask. So I'll add a window, and that's going to act as a garbage mat, and it's going to mask out anything outside of it. Let's see our image again. Now we can change our saturation. Let's give them a little more blue, and I want to make them brighter. Okay, good. Now, blemishes. We're going to concentrate on this one here. First, I'll make a window. You can resize, rotate, and change the feather of your window. OK, that looks good. Next thing we want to do is go to Tracker and make sure we're on the first frame of our clip right here, and track it forward so it'll follow her movement. Now we go to Blur, increase the radius, and blur that right out. Before and after. We smooth that out a little bit. For vignette, let's make another window and get that in place. Right about there. Now I'll go to Offset and bring it down. Now I'll invert the window. Notice it's a little blue, so I'll add some warmth to it. And there you go. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now let's jump over to our creative grade. I'll go to the LUTs, and I have some film looks. We'll add one of those. Now this is really intense, so I'll go to my key output, and I can dial that down. 
Yeah, that's nice. Now our secondary grade is where I make any fine tune adjustments. You don't want to make those adjustments in your primary grade because any changes you make to the grade will change all the qualifiers and really mess with your masks. If you set your qualifier and your skin tones to a certain type of magenta and then you change the hue of your image in your primary grade, it's going to change what the qualifier chooses here. So you want to make those changes in your secondary node instead. All right, so great, we have a graded image. Now to bulk grade the rest of your clips, first we're gonna make a still of this one. Right click and grab still. Notice behind our scopes is our gallery of stills. I'll go to another thumbnail that needs a grade. There are two ways to transfer the grade we just made to other clips. The first way is to go to the still and right click, apply grade. There's another way and that is, let's select this clip. Now if we middle click on another grade, boom, it applies the grade. Middle click is the middle button of your mouse. And if you don't have a mouse with a middle button, you can either map a gesture onto, say, a magic mouse if you're using one of those, or I have a stylus, a Wacom tablet, and I just map the middle click to my right button. I'm gonna take the eyes and the skin tones off. We don't need the vignette or blemish removal either. Let's take those off. Now I'll apply this grade to all the others by selecting them all and middle clicking this one. Now we have a grade across all of our clips and we can make adjustments to each separately. I love what this looks like, but I don't much love what these look like. Let's match these. There's a way you can look at an image as a reference when you're grading others. First, you grab a still. I'm gonna go to the next clip here and make sure the still we grabbed is selected. Then, click this box. And what that does is it gives me a split screen. I'm working on this clip with the water. And I can go into my color wheels and just play around until they match. It's all trial and error. It looks pretty matchy. Now I'm just gonna click on this third clip and middle click. You notice we pretty quickly and easily leveled out these three clips. And there you go. Our film is graded and we can bring it back into Premiere the way you learned in episode two. That was just a basic overview of DaVinci and there's so much more we didn't touch on, but these basics will cover 95% of what you need to get the most out of your footage. And it may be a little clunky to do this round trip versus just using Lumetri like we learned in episode one, but once you get the hang of this, it offers you so much more control over the look of your footage. Thanks for watching.